So in order to add a PBR texture to any object, the first thing you need to do is UV unwrap that object. So to explain what UV unwrapping is, let's go over to this cube on the right hand side of my screen here. So if I were to ask you as a human to wrap a two dimensional image around this cube, it'd be pretty simple, right? You might think of it like wrapping a present or reverse peeling a tangerine or cutting fabric to wrap around an object. In order to do it in 3D space, we have to lay the object down flat so that the computer can lay the flat image on top of our flattened model. And then the computer will reassemble the model exactly how it was before, but with the textures applied. Now, you might be asking why this UV unwrapping step is necessary because at least for our human brains, it seems pretty simple how we'd wrap that two dimensional image around the object. The problem is computers don't think like human brains do. And so if a computer were to try to wrap a two dimensional image around this cube, it wouldn't know that we didn't want it to stretch the image or it wouldn't know what orientation we wanted the image and mayhem would ensue. A good example is if we come over here, on these two spheres, I'm trying to apply the same PBR texture to each of them. The one on the left has a UV map, and the one on the right doesn't have a UV map. And you can see that the one on the left wraps essentially how you'd expect a two-dimensional image to wrap around a 3D object, but the one on the right looks much different. It has essentially taken a small part of our image and stretched it out and wrapped it around our entire model. So the process of unwrapping our model is essential to accurately texturing an object with PBR textures. So real quick, I'm gonna show you how to UV unwrap an object. So if I click out of here, I'm gonna add a simple cube. For the sake of this example, I'm gonna subdivide it. So now it's essentially a sphere. So in order to UV unwrap any object, you have to indicate seams or edges on the object that you want the computer to cut along before it tries to flatten out the object. And a good rule of thumb is choosing edges that won't be seen by the final camera. Because every texture is going to have some level of seams, we just want to mitigate that by hiding them the best we can. So if I select a couple of edges, and a lot of this is all about trial and error. So this attempt could be totally a failure. So once I have my seams selected, I'm just gonna select a couple more. Once I have my edges selected that I wanna cut along, I'm going to right click and go down to mark seam, and you're going to see those edges turn red. So when I unwrap my object, Blender is going to cut along those edges. And now I'm going to go, come over here and go to my UV editor. This is gonna show me how Blender 3D has flattened my object. So I'm going to select all of my edges. I'm gonna click F3 and type unwrap. And you can see this is how Blender has flattened my object. Okay, now that I have my object UV unwrapped, I'm gonna teach you how to add a PBR texture really quickly. So I'm going to move out of my UV editor and go over to my shader editor over here. I'm going to add a new texture to my object by clicking new. So here's my principled BSDF and I can change basic functions of my texture from here, but I want to add the same texture material that I did before. So if we take a look at the principled BSDF, you see that they have what are called nodes and you can connect different components to these nodes in order to change the roughness, the base color, basically whatever function is here, you can add a node to affect that. So if I wanted to add an image texture to my base color, I could click Shift A and add an image texture and then connect the color to the base color. And you can see it's pink right now. And Blender pink just means that it doesn't have a file input. So I'm telling it to show an image texture, but it doesn't know what image to use. So I'm gonna open and I'm going to pick just what's here. I'm gonna open that. And now it's wrapping that image texture around my object. 
and you can see there are seams that are being shown. Depending on where my camera is, I might want to adjust those. And you can always adjust the seam by clicking it, right clicking, and click clear seam. But you will have to re-unwrap your object. Okay, so instead of having this texture, I wanna have that rock texture we looked at before. So I'm going to delete this image texture and we're going to use what's called Node Wrangler in order to quickly add PBR textures. So if you don't already have Node Wrangler enabled, go over to Edit, Preferences, and type in Node Wrangler. And if this check mark isn't checked, click that and it should be enabled. Okay, once Node Wrangler is enabled, you're going to click your principal BSDF then you're going to click Control Shift T, and then you're going to find the files that you want to make up your PBR texture. So, I believe my file is Arial Rocks. I'm gonna to go to Textures. So I have my Diffuse, which is my base color, my Displacement, my Normal, and my Roughness. So I'm gonna select all of these, click Principal Texture Setup, and you can see it has set up my nodes. One thing to keep in mind is you see that even though our displacement is plugged in, we're not seeing any displacement in our object. And that's because you have to manually enable displacement. And you can do that by going over to your material editor, scrolling down, and under surface and displacement, you wanna click displacement and bump. And you can see now it's starting to displace and you can edit that amount of displacement over in your scale parameter under your displacement node. So yeah, that's how you unwrap an object and add a PBR texture to it. Hopefully that helps. Ping me if you have any questions. Thanks a lot, guys.